Hello and welcome to the Fulhamish YouTube channel. Uh, as you can see, it's not Joe Sansom today. He's come down with the non-COVID cold. I'm joined by Jack J. Collins. How are you, Jack? Uh, I'm very well, thank you, Jack. And it's an honour to be asked to step into Joe's shoes. Big, big <laughs> shoes to fill. The Jack and Jack show for, for one week, I suppose. It, it's the Jack and Jack show and the Jack and Jack and James show. Uh, James <laughs> Alcott, uh, QPR fan, YouTuber. How are you today? I'm cracking. Yeah, I'm really, really good. Um, yeah, yeah. We it's one of those where we won our last game going into the ancestral break. So you kind of that you allowed that long glow of that, which is nice. And uh, yeah. Lyndon Dyke scoring goals for Scotland as well. So yeah, world's a good place. Yeah, that that does help actually. Dykes with a big goal for Scotland last night against the Faroe Islands. Um, QPR v Fulham. I mean, it's a big game. We haven't played each other in front of fans since oh, I don't know about November, October, two thousand and. 19 uh, and then of course we came to the kind prince foundation stadium and, and one two one during that weird little lockdown period where games were yeah. played behind closed doors but it's been a weird one we've been up in the premier league and then we're back down again and suddenly qpr are quite good at football so um <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so what's been going on i mean qpr were touted um earlier in the summer as, as big playoff favorites uh, they had a fantastic second half of the season last season uh, which basically got them into that sort of mindset where they might do quite well. And it's proven to be right. And Mark Warburton, who right now has COVID, might be back for Saturday's game. Apparently is back for Saturday's game. What have you made of QPR season so far, um, James? I've been really pleased. I think, you know, that there was heightened expectations. And, and with that comes concern because, you you know, that that adds pressure, right, to, to the team. But it's a really good squad. You know, it's not huge, but I think there's a lot of hungry players in there. Um, a good mix of a uh, few experienced heads uh, who are very competent for this division, maybe not Premier League quality, but certainly competent for, for the for the championship. Uh, and, and exciting youngsters who've had time to develop, get better, play games. And uh, yeah, it's, it, I, I think we're a really well-run club now. You know, it's, it's not something that it would be one of those, and I'm sure you guys have it as well, where you meet people who don't know enough and they just go straight to, I don't know, the salacious moments of your history. And uh, and that's kind of been the one for us. Uh, but I think we are now being very clear in how we're, we're running the club and it's a really nice mix. And and the divisions, it's more up for grabs than I thought. I, th I thought there was a lot of space after yourselves and West Brom, but you guys have had a little little wobble, I guess, in, in recent weeks. Um, I personally don't think it's anything for you specifically to, to worry about. I think more so for, for West Brom. But um, back to us, I, I, I'm, I'm delighted. Uh, you know, we're in sixth place at the moment. That's all I'm really worried about. And uh, if we can keep that trending in that direction, I, I, think we can, I think we can finish higher than sixth. But as long as we don't mm. finish below that, then it will be an exciting season because I just want, I want a playoff semi-final at Loftus Road in, in, in midweek in the evening. That's, that's all I want from this season. And then from there, we just see what happens. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a, a fair expectation. I mean, I, I had you as playoff winners because I think that you, as you say, this is a squad that has that nice little level of, of ability in it. Also that just the, the, the kind of steering rudders to get you out of the championship. You know, we'll, I'm sure we'll come on to Steffi Hansen because why wouldn't we? But, <laughs> it, it, you know, there are rudders in this squad that you look at and go very good player for this division, very good player for this division. And then the talent around them, it is built in a really nice fashion. But I mean, I kind of just wanted to touch on, on, on what you were getting at there in terms of how you, how, how that transition happened, right? Because a couple of years ago, especially after that relegation, that, that disastrous relegation from the Premier League, mm. it looked like QPR were at sixes and sevens. And things have really steadied, have really calmed down, have managed to sort the wage bill out to really kind of encourage youngsters through. And we've seen some leave, some stay. And and, and on top of that, you're looking at, you know, you've brought through Bryce Samuel and a Barry Etze and gone, OK, off they go. And here come the next generation. It's starting yeah. to look like, a, as you say, a really smooth, slick operation. Where mm. was the turning point? What happened that actually flipped things on its head? Well, I think I think possibly a couple of things. That's a really good question. Um, I think one thing that, that we realized was uh, we felt it, despite spending so much money and going up through the playoffs and having the ups and downs of that, I think everyone felt quite disillusioned, which is which is odd. You know, people think, oh, OK, money, spending it on big players. Oh, exciting. It, what happens, though, is that you lose the connection, I think, or, or it, that is something that becomes a possible byproduct of it all. Right. 
And that certainly happened for us with the players that we had. And, you know, my excitement over this season is when I think about 2014, where we went up through the playoffs and Zamora and all that stuff. We could talk about Zamora as well, couldn't we? But the, mm. more, more so, when I look at that squad, I have very... I don't have a huge amount of love for the bulk of that squad. Um, and whereas if this squad this season was able to do something and go up with, you know, with Ilias Chair and and Rob Dickey and, and those kind of players, Senny Dieng as our goalkeeper, it would be so much more special because they are players that, as you say, have been kind of brought through, you know, care, you know, deserve it and have earned it and haven't fleeced us for it. So the changing point was probably after going back down the second time, we then quite quickly realised, oh, for whatever reason, and probably not personnel in terms of their names, but quality, certainly, we weren't going to go back up. Um, and so then all of a sudden, OK, it's like, what do we do? We've got these parachute payments. We've also got, you know, financial mm. fair play problems and we're going to have to spend money on that. So we need to we need to cut our cloth uh, accordingly. We tried to make made a couple of changes in terms of managers. Um, but the the real change I I think was certainly an out uh, uh, an outlook of the people higher up. Lee Hughes is our uh, ch chief executive. He's fantastic. Did brilliant stuff at Southampton. Did brilliant stuff at Burnley uh, in terms of making them sort of well run clubs. Sustainable, um, isn't it? Yeah, 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 sustainable or just understanding your expectations and how you should behave, basically. Um, and he's very honest with that and very transparent with that, which is great. Um. We've got a, a we change. I think Les Ferdinand deserves a bit of credit with uh, Chris Ramsey, um, who have sorted out our academy, but also kind of understood that there's an opportunity for QPR to take these players who aren't wanted from Spurs or Arsenal or whoever it might be and turn them into Ilias Chair, Chris Willock, uh, Abir Eze to a point, I guess, as well. So that's another a, a great way of kind of putting together our. our you know, when we went very clearly that we're going to go down that route, unless Ferdinand comes from a, a squad that was, he came from Hayes, you know, from non-league. He played in a squad with Andy Sinton, who was bought from Brentford, Ian Holloway, who was bought from Bristol Rovers, you know, I don't know Rufus Brevet, who was brought from Blackpool, like all these players that came from beneath and made their way up because we saw the potential. He started to it, put that within our club. Yeah. Um, so that was another one. And I think the final one, and it's what the person who doesn't really get credit at all for it, but but did do very well for us was we had a very poor squad, really. And Ian Holloway kept us up, kept us safe, cut the wage bill by a huge amount and gave young players an opportunity and managed all of that um, and still kind of then lost his job. Um, but sort of surviving in those seasons then allows you to kind of go from, you know, lying on your front to getting on your knees, to getting on your knees, to sort of standing up with a cane, to stand, to starting to walk. Yeah. And now we're starting to get into a sort of gentle jog with this squad. So I, I, I think those those are the two pinpoints, really, the, you know, the hierarchy. And then Ian Holloway, I think, did make a, a, a big change. As, as limited as people think as he is as a manager, I think that he, he got us through that that murky stage. And, and now we've now we've got a really well-run club. Night Watchman. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great way of putting it. Great way of putting it. You mentioned Ian Holloway, obviously. He, he was sacked. And then Mark Warburton, who was at Brentford, almost took them from the League One to the Premier League within two seasons. I mean, they came up, they got into the playoffs, they lost to Middlesbrough, but they did very, very well. Uh, he then had a stint at Rangers and Nottingham Forest. Um, and then he's now in QPR. And I feel like he's really found his feet again in the championship. Um, what, what kind of difference has he made to the club and do you see him being a long-term manager and, and and taking you to that next step to the Premier League? Yeah, we had a little. Um, we had the blip that was called Steve McLaren as well. Um, oh yeah, that's that's who um, <laughs> Holloway lost his job to Steve McLaren, bizarrely. Um, so yeah, I I love Warburton. I think he's intelligent, and I think that's such an important part of management now. Like I don't think you can get away with just being blood and thunder anymore. Like it's such an uh, an in-depth game. There's so much, especially in the EFL, there's so much kind of tactical nuance. I mm. chatted to Chris Wilder a couple of weeks ago, and he was saying that in terms of that, in terms of the tactics of a game and within game, the championships probably more so than the, than the Premier League. He said because ultimately it comes down to the quality of the players a little bit more in the Premier League. 
Mm. Um, and Warburton is, yeah, he's smart. I like that he's got principles. We play great football. We play entertaining possession-based football. Um, we And we've, without spending too much, you know, if you think of the, the seasons that he's had with us, yes, he was fortunate to have, you know, likes of Eze and we had Ryan Manning at that time and a few other mm. players. But yeah, he does have that pin- uh, print, those principles, sorry. He does talk, there's a lot of talk about him not having a plan B, but I, I, I think I can, I think he has, evolved as a manager as well you know the signing of someone like Lyndon Dykes is is uh, you know he's a big guy you know he's a target man for us so if he just wanted us just to tap it about um then then that wouldn't have worked for us so I think he has evolved and understands that you need sort of different ways to win a football game he's very good at bringing players through Uh, I like that you know if, if you're a chairman and and you go oh how many players do you want? He generally wants about 25. He, does, he wants 23 players. Like He doesn't want much more than that. He likes a small squad to keep it competitive. So that's useful as well. Um, and, and he's been brilliant. And, and I think he's, he's not up and down, which I think could, at, on a bad run can frustrate. But mm. overall, you know, for a, a club that's not got that much money to spend, we're playing good football dominating football games and mm. not spending loads of money i think he deserves huge credit and i'd like him to be our manager for a very long time mm. Mm. absolutely i think this is is a fairer point but i'd like to come on to the game james and and, and how this kind of battle plays out and what we've seen from qbr so far this season is mostly or in the last couple of games in particular has been that three four one two formation has he found what suits this group of players I think th- he wants options. I think certainly what worked last year was was that sort of the three at the back. And I think he feels very, uh, certainly in a game against a team like yourself, uh, I think those bigger games against better teams, we will look to play three. Um, so that will continue. I think, again, we might, if we're trying to break teams down a bit more and have that extra attacking player, we'll look to play the, play the four. And we've brought in Jimmy Dunn from Burnley, yeah. who's been oh, starting to play games now, whereas before it was, uh, we had a back three of Jordy Device, who is great. And I'd love to, I'd love to see a battle between him and Mitrovic this weekend. It'd be fascinating because, mm. uh, you know, two big men going at it. But um, Rob Dickey on the right-hand side, great, great signing for us and is growing. And then uh, Johan Barbe on the left-hand side, who's so much better as a left-sided centre-back than he is as a left full-back. Um, but against, so against lesser sides, we'll play two. Against, I, I expect us to play three uh, against you. Um, I think it's a case of understanding who our best players are. The, the front, the front men, you've got Charlie Austin Dykes and uh, Andre Gray. It's going to be interesting to see how they how they play that one out because I, normally when we have international games, Lyndon Dykes doesn't play that next game, and mm. the fact that we've got Andre Gray now is means that we have those options. It'd be interesting to see if he plays those two together or just Andre Gray, or just Charlie Austin. When Charlie Austin plays on his own, I feel like we're a little bit lacking um, in terms of his hold-up play. Andre Gray will do a bit more work. He'll run the channels, you know, properly run the channels, not just go, oh, I'm pretending to run the channels kind of thing that Charlie Austin does. Um, But Charlie Austin just wants to get the ball in the box. Um, because if he if he touches the ball in the box, it's very likely that there could be a goal from it because he still has that X factor. It's absolutely incredible. But our best players are Chrissy Willock and, and Ilias Chair. So it's a way of getting the ball to them. Uh, and that's where my concern is with Fulham is that you've got such a great midfield and and you're a great uh, possession-based team as well. Mm-hmm. Like you're happy, you've got very comfortable players on the ball. And I, won- I just wonder if our style is going to, not suit playing you guys at all so i wonder if warburton will play any differently if if, we, if this wasn't after an international break i think lyndon dykes and andre gray might be the two and we play a little bit more direct but with him playing those two games big big games for scotland normally warburton takes him out so i've got i've got yeah i'm, I'm not totally certain on, on where we're going to go with that and maybe the focus will be on Ilias chair who's been brilliant for us well, the question I would ask is, is is he going to be that pressing 10? Because where we've really struggled this season, I think, from, from our perspective is 
Callum O'Hare put us under the mm. cosh as the 10 in the last mm. game. And look, Callum O'Hare is a wonderful player. But the, both Coventry full uh, wing backs pushed up really high, pushed us out. We had O'Hare basically chasing Harrison Reed as a six and then John Mikel Seri and not letting them have any time on the ball. And that's where Fulham have struggled. So I'm quite intrigued right. to see if Cher can, I mean, I think he's a wonderful player, but whether he can, he can play that role and be that kind of pressing machine for the entire game, because that's, yeah. I think, where we've really struggled. Right, that's interesting because I don't think I don't think that's us. I think we're we we like a really we like quite a slow tempo. Um, we don't overly press. And in terms of Ilias Chair, what happened in uh, well, I can't remember what the game was recently that I went to, but he he actually played as we sort of played Johansson, Willock, and Chair. And Willock plays on that kind of left channel a little bit more. Chair actually played. At, on the right, but he wasn't really like your normal 10. He was kind of sort of dropping deep to get on the ball to make certainly in possession uh, a, a bit more of a, like a double point. Yeah. yeah. With, with, with Johansson, because he does have that in him. You know, he did that in this first season where we had, we had as we had, I want to say Dominic ball. And then we had space for him. He didn't do that as a, I'm the 10 role. He was, he was a little bit different. It seems like in the, in the second half of games, he offers that up a little bit more. Or if he's just playing with one guy up front, then he's given a bit more of a license to, to get forward because you've got another midfielder in Dominic Ball or whoever it might be in midfield to kind of to, to help with that side of it. I don't see us pressing like that, I'll be honest. Um, so that's a concern. Well, that's good. Thanks, <laughs> thanks very much. Yeah, you made, you made me more you confident up. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We. I think we. it's been so interesting because I think we... You know, in football, you see so much people go like in transition, go, 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 go. We're not like that. We're, mm. we're, we've, we almost drag the tempo down a bit, which can get a little bit scary, but it does allow Johansson to be on the ball, chair to be on the ball, Willock to be on the ball. Um, and the bad side of it is that sometimes when you're trying to drag the, the, the pace of a game down, you end up making silly mistakes in horrible areas. And then, you're, mm. you know, you concede goals, which we have done this season. But in the second half of games, there is a that we seem to sort of again against lesser sides, we seem to be able to turn the screw a little bit more and and in the end have enough quality to win more games than we lose. Uh, again, I just think we're walking into something here where you have so much quality. I mm. mean, is that do you pay a high tempo? Uh, we've, we've we've picked up the tempo since mm. Parker left. Oh, yeah, we started definitely. to started to play a little bit faster, but I actually weirdly think that slowing it down might help us. It's the teams yeah, who've played, you know, who've really, really got into our necks that have 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 worried us. Bristol City in the second half, Coventry mm. in the second half of that game. They're the games that they've really, really sort of come at us. And I do have a feeling that if it slows down, you're giving the likes of John McElserry, Harry Wilson, time to pick out passes and time to start blocking through. I, I think that that will suit us. But we mm. have struggled against the three, four, one, two shapes. So, mm. you know, on, on the whole, this is a bit sort of six of this half a dozen of the other, if I'm honest. Yeah. yeah. Joe also is a good point, actually. Chair's been away with Morocco uh, oh. as well, and he's playing games there as well. So if you think of those key players for us, you know, that's that's two that are, um, you know, been away and playing games during the international break. So that could, that could be a concern for us as well. I wonder, you never know, maybe Warburton actually goes a bit more defensive and, I mean, it's it's a massive. Uh, he's a young lad, chair, and and it, obviously, I'm sure he would probably want want to play. But it'd be interesting to see how conservative with the sort of the use of our squad this get uh, uh, we are or Warburton is for this game, or or if he looks at it a bit more broadly and go, it's Fulham away. Let's play. Let's play three two. Hang on, I'm rubbish with this. Um, let's play three three four three or and and but two two. Um, just one striker really up there in say Austin or Andre Gray and be a lot more careful mm. in what we're in what we're doing and just go let's get a draw and let's leave and never speak of this again. Might be that. Yeah, that's been a lot of teams' approaches so far this season. Um I actually forgot <laughs> get used you've... to that. With the no, exactly. that got, get used to that. I, honestly we've got a long way to go and I'm expecting more teams to come to the cottage and just Shut up, Sit shop. In, but, yeah. but the thing is, though, Jack says that you know when games, when when teams come and make it more difficult for us in their press, games get very frantic for Fulham, and suddenly it gets very like unpredictable end to end. And Bristol City away when they really ramped it up, 
and then we actually had a flurry of chances at the end of the game. But Bristol City were so. Did they crash the you, point. Bristol City? Sorry, because we we absolutely this is one of the most frustrating games of my life. We played with Bristol City, and we're all over mm. them. They they showed a real lack. They showed no real ambition. It was just like, can we get Vyman in on 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 a counter attack? And they did it, and they like absolutely robbed us. But they're they're having a really good period like are they mm. so did they go for it again they you? did no no they pressed us for about we were 20 minutes we scored on the 50th right. minute they spent 20 minutes pre- they, 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 i can't imagine a more one-sided first half yeah we then went second half they pressed us for 20 minutes they scored a ridiculous offside goal from offside, the corner, yeah. and and then we battered them for the last 20 minutes as they sat in again there was 20 right. minutes where they decided they yeah. were going to press and okay. it all got very stretched and frantic and mad and then it calmed down again. But for those 20 minutes, Fulham looked worried because that's yeah. what happens, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I actually forgot that we played you last season in the FA Cup. Um, oh, yeah. Because it was behind closed doors. <laughs> so did James. So did I. You, you <laughs> generally just forget <laughs> yeah. that these sort of things happen. We actually won in extra time. It was quite a, a stressful game, as I seem to recall. But Fulham QPR is a fixture where QPR haven't beaten us since... The most ridiculous game. (laughs) They haven't beaten us since 2016-17 season. Oh, yes, I remember. Where Fulham missed two penalties. (laughs) I just... It was the worst game ever. Tim Ream scored for us. Um, Mm. Can't remember who's... Oh, it was... um, Silla got the winner for us. It's just a Silla scored. Yeah, Yeah. just a Silla scored. Which makes it it ridiculous. Which makes it crazy in itself, doesn't it? Because he just (laughs) didn't really score many goals. What a game that was. That was, but I mean, Steph missed. I, no, I have no sympathy, missed for you. Yeah, I have no sympathy for you at all. You've beaten a six nil at your place. I think have you've beaten us five or something at ours. Like there was a horrible run where Andy Johnson and it might have been him and Zamora just it was, like yeah. it got so bad that we just had to buy them both just to stop it. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So um, how, how do you actually see this? How do you see this one going then? Genuinely. <laughs> Quite badly, if I'm honest. Like, I I think. Do you know what? As it's it's great to talk it out, isn't it? Because you kind of go, okay, seeing that, thinking about this and that, and those different elements of it. What do we do? And and I think actually, it, it, as we've got to the conclusion of it, there, like, I would like to see Dominic Ball and Johansson in midfield together, and us kind of be careful in what mm-hmm. we're doing. Play Andre Gray up top. Play with a bit of a counter attack about us. Uh, get to half time and then and then go from there because yeah what is good is that we do have a squad now where there is enough you know there's a few elements off the bench that can can excite you know Adoma as well has been really unlucky not to start more games mm-hmm. for us mm-hmm. um so i i think we i'd like to see us be careful and conservative with the with the selection what does concern me the most is that we don't play at that really really high tempo style and and I think that really does suit you because ultimately, if we're both pl- trying to play that similar way, you have better players than us. You are playing at home and you will be switched on. This isn't Blackpool and, and that's no disrespect to Blackpool, but I think Fulham go into that game and Fulham dominated that game as well from what I've seen from XG and stuff. But, uh, oh, well, every game you play. But it, in those games, sometimes when it's not a derby game, there is this that element of, I don't know, uh, just... I don't know. You know, it's not. There's no. Reper- there's not as much repercussion as not mm. stepping up at home yeah. against a, mm. a rival. You know, there'll be more talk about it. And and when you've got better players who will look to step up and put on a show, I think you'll probably do that. Mm. And uh, and if we can get out there with a draw, I'd be absolutely thrilled. I'd be delighted because I like. Oh. It's a nice away day. It's always a nice away day. Mm. I'm looking forward to the walk as long as the rain's not there. And so if I can walk back with a draw, I'll take that now. Yeah, it's a half 12, which is very annoying. But um, but Sky do what Sky do, I suppose. But um, I mean, also, like the Met Police are going to have a mayor on Sunday, aren't they? Because I know, because they've got us at 12.30 and then at 5.30, they've got Brentford Chelsea. Brentford Chelsea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, yeah, what we should do is organise all of West London to play each other on the same day. Ealing is going to be a mess. It's going to be it's unbelievable. That's true. Yeah, yeah. There... I think... Uh, I don't think it'd be that tasty, though. Do you know? Do you know what I, mean? I don't think we. I don't think any of us are that uh, are no. kind of like that. Although, yeah, I think the Brentford fans are going to be very confused. Do you know what I would love what would be so good is that because I'm thinking about it when you all these games are happening, I'm like, oh, we're we're the bottom West London club at the moment. So it'd be nice to just leapfrog you, just so we're not the uh, mm. we're not at the <laughs> bottom of that, which is a uh, which is a not not the yeah. place that we want to be. Um, yeah. If Q- if QPR win, they're two points behind us. That 
they will leapfrog us and, and you know be a, ahead of us. Um, there is a chance, albeit a very small one, or maybe not, that all four West London clubs, Fulham, QPR, Chelsea, Brentford, could be in the Premier League next season. I know. That's a very weird prospect. Yeah, you can't celebrate. Amazing. You can't celebrate it because no, you're not allowed. <laughs> but it would be it would be interesting. I mean, it would also be weird. um, uh, it would make it harder for us all because those get I, I you know I think that's often a problem when you're a London club when you had, we had it a few seasons ago where there were so many London clubs that they're all derbies and they're mm. all just a little bit more tense. Do mm. you know what I mean? Yeah, it's quite stressful. So I don't think that would be great for us. But for, if I may, with Fulham, you know. What's um? Who are you? Who's your key man? And and do you have anyone missing out or well, yeah. unavailable? Uh, from what I understand, we've still got Fabio Carvalho, who's still out injured. Uh, he's been an absolute live wire early on this mm. season. He was scoring, assisting, being an absolute menace for us. Um, who else is out? Um, I can't. Well, we're not sure if Kenny Tete is going to return um, at this it. point because yeah. he's been he's been injured. Um, and Bobby Reed, Anthony Robinson, and Tim Ream all play games on thir- well, Friday morning at midnight English oh. time, which really? suggests wow. that they're not going to be playing. Yeah, yeah they're not wow. going to be playing in the latter games. Um, it's a little bit late. Yeah, Bobby Reed in particular. I think here his one's an hour after the American kickoff, so he doesn't kick <laughs> off till half one on wow. Friday morning. So he. Um, I don't so know. Chance, gonna, really. I don't think Bobby Reed's going to play. I don't yeah. think Anthony Robinson's going to play, and I'd be surprised if Tim Ream plays. So amazing. There's a lot there. There's a lot missing. But I mean, you look at the replacements for them now, and and this is the, the good thing about the depth, right? Is that Alfie Mawson steps in with Tosin Adarabio at centre back. You'd imagine Joe Bryan steps in at left back. We mm, think wow. it probably will be Dominguez Keener if if both Bobby Reed and Fabio oh, Carvalho yes. are out. Dominguez Keener will step in at ten. Um, or we'll go for the kind of Harrison Reed, Nathaniel Chalaber energy oh e- energy pivot in front of John McHale Seri. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, John McHale Seri got about 70 minutes for the Ivory Coast, so that's okay. He should be back in training tomorrow. Uh, and, so and he's just been back. walking the league, hasn't he? He's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. four years after we signed him, uh, we finally started to see all the, what the fuss was about with, with John McCalsari, which is, you know, it's taking its time. But we're, is that uh, is we're that here. coincidentally in line with him, you know, running down his contract now and either wanting a, you know, a, a club or a new contract? Maybe. Um, the the other answer is that he's worked with Marco Silva before, um, and therefore there, there's a little bit of a bond there already. And he, yeah. you know, it's been said, it's I trust you. I want you to start every game. I want you to be my kind of metronome. And that's where I've kind of gone for. So we'll wow. be it'd be interesting to see what happens next with him. But yeah, he's still got I think a year and a half left on his deal. So okay. there's, there's enough enough yet in the yeah. tank to to not be too worried straight away. Yeah, there's a, a lot going on. It's going to be a big game. We'll we'll end with a score prediction from everyone. Uh, James, we'll start with you. Do you know with all those uh, with all those um, casualties, <laughs> or international casualties? Yeah, that sounds terrible. Hopefully, it's not. Um, you put you what? I'll always, I'll, I'll never not go for the Rangers. Two one QPR. Address Silla last minute. Just a... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jack, I was going to go two one Fulham. I mean, QPR haven't been battered this season. Every game they've lost is two one. I think we'll go two nil up, concede in the sort of the seventy fifth minute, and have the most horrible That's fifteen minutes of mm. our lives. Um, but I think we'll hang on. I think we'll. Uh, hang on. Yeah, we were there before as well. We we went two up. And missed a penalty. Then Matt's, I can't remember who scored, someone scored. And then the keeper almost scored in the ninth minute of added time. Oh, yeah. Road at the time. Oh, yeah. And it was just very Alex, stressful. Alex Smithies loved saving penalties. If he'd scored oh, a goal against us, man. I think I might have like, had to just disown him as a human. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with um, 1 1, just because it seems to always end 1 1 uh, in the championship. Well, <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure, James. No, I, I, honestly, every result I seem to remember in the championship is always one all, especially ones that you want to win. Yeah, but, that is um, true. I'll take that. But obviously, after Coventry, we need to bounce back. And, and genuinely, I'm being serious. We need to win the game. Um, mm. James, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks very much for being here. Always a pleasure, guys. Good to see you both. And um, yeah, I hope you lose. Yeah, I hope you <laughs> it's going to be all, interesting. Mate. It's going to be interesting. Uh, we'll see you later on in the in this season when we come to the Kind Prince Foundation Stadium. And all for now, what we have to say is come on, Fulham. We'll see you very early in the pub on Saturday morning. Uh, Enjoy 
your Friday night and we will go on Saturday morning. You're...